Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today we are going to talk about Ming Aurelia, uh, specifically the cultivar Fabian. And uh, because there are many different types of Aurelias, many have very fine foliage, the uh, Ming Aurelia Fabian, however, as you can see, has very cool, very almost dinner, sometimes they're described as dinner plate uh, shaped leaves because they're very round, which is uh, actually not that common for plants. There's not that many plants that have leaves that are this round. So as mentioned, this is a, uh, an Aurelia, uh, botanical name Polyceus, Scutellaria and Fabian cultivar. So the, these large scalloped dark green leaves, they're glossy, um, they tend to curve outwards a little bit and they're deeply veined and tinged purple underneath the leaves. So we have a older specimen to the left there you can see they get to be pretty good size. They do grow to be pretty tall. This one will continue to grow. I have had seen some that are 12 feet tall indoors. So uh, this one is about 10 feet tall now or so. So it's, it's definitely the one to the left there is definitely getting bigger, taller. The one to the right is more of an adolescent and uh, it will continue to grow like this um, one to the left, providing it's given good care. So how to have uh, a plant, a Ming Aurelia Fabian, that is very uh, healthy and, and happy. So lighting. They do prefer medium to bright light. Indirect light is uh, from coming from something like a Western or Southern exposure is best. So some blinds there or put them a few feet away from the window because that can get a little bit too hot for them. However, you can put them in a, uh, an Eastern exposure window. They love Eastern exposure windows because they get really nice bright light in the morning and then in the evening it's not, it's just more indirect. So that's a really good place for them. They also do really well under, under supplemental lighting, under full spectrum lighting. Uh, so that is another option for you. I do have a video on that that I will um, put the link for below. So the, as mentioned, avoiding direct sunlight because they will get some burn, leaf burn, if that happens. The, but medium to bright will do, do the trick for you. Now watering, you wanna water this plant when the first inch or so has dried out of soil. On the moisture meter, you want it to be in the four range, getting close to three. The, this is generally the case with most house plants. You want them to, what I call approach dryness would be, which would be that four approaching three, which would be the top inch or so dry, depending on how big the plant is. Uh, they do like to drink a lot of water, but one of the reasons why besides the fact, besides a, a root, avoiding root rot, uh, you don't want to overwater these plants is that they are subject to edema. That's a condition where the plant is taking up water faster than it can transpire it through the leaves and that will cause cells to rupture in the leaves. And when those cells rupture in the leaves, then you will get funny little bumps all over the leaves. And those, those little bumps, sometimes they look like, they look like scale insects, but they aren't actually scale insects. The, you can tell the difference because if you try to take them off, they won't come off. They are a part of the leaf. So they t it tends to look a little corky and, uh, and bumpy. And so keep that in mind. So if you water them, if you don't overwater them, you will avoid that problem. 
Uh, and so waiting until the plant actually needs water before watering. Do keep in mind, however, that these are pretty fast drinkers, so you may end up watering them more than you do other plants, but wait in between for the drier soil before you do that. Okay, so fertilizing. They do like to be fed. Uh, they aren't huge feeders, but they do like to be fed occasionally. So I generally would recommend with this plant feeding it about every three months during the growing season. So you wouldn't want to do this in the, in the middle of winter, but the rest of the year, about every, and you can even go two months, two to three months using a nice organic fertilizer on the plant. I have a green gourmet houseplant food. I'll put the link below that I use on, on these plants and it responds well, but uh, if you do use another type of fertilizer, opt for a, an organic fertilizer, and that um, will be good for this plant because they do tend to get crispy outer leaves, and those crispy outer leaves can be from over-fertilizing. Over crispy outer leaves can also be from salt buildup in the soil, and I have a video on that. And the salt buildup on the, in the soil often comes from over-fertilizing, and it will come uh, very quickly from fertilizing with chemical fertilizers. So to avoid all of that, use an organic fertilizer and do use it uh, at half strength to be on if you want to be on the safe side as well that is another th good thing to do these plants don't require much pruning but obviously if you have an, uh, a, a leaf that is is gone is done do clip it off at the base of the plant that will grow generally new leaves from that part where you where you prune it off Keep in mind that you don't want to prune off more than one third of a plant at any one pruning because you will put it into shock and you can kill it. So try not to go too crazy on these plants. They are fairly slow growing plants, so it's not like they're gonna fill up your living room in one season. So they, the one to the left there has been grown. It was the size of the one to the right, but that was about six or seven years ago. So like I said, they, they do continue to grow. They're slow and steady growers, but not real fast growers. You'll see the cool, uh, the, um, the, uh, at the base of the plant, uh, you can see there is a stalk. At, at, it's a stalking at the trunk. So this plant is really cool because it has a trunk-like base. So it really does look like a tree, like a real tree that you'd find outdoors. So you can get a really nice uh, uh, indoor tree look with the plant as well. And that's another thing I really like about it. Uh, the, uh, the new stems coming off of that base will often be, be thinner, as you see in the, in the larger plant, but it still looks um, very architectural, is what I like to think of that when you have that different sort of uh, a look at the base of the plant. So humidity. They do like some humidity. So if you can put them on a humidity tray, if you live in a really dry climate, then do consider putting them on a humidity tray. I have videos on that as well. That will give them the little extra added moisture and help them. If, uh, if, you, don't, if you live in a, in a moist climate, a humid climate, then you don't really need to worry about about humidifying them. But if it, so I'm talking if you're living in a very dry climate, do consider giving them some humidity because the dry crispy leaf edges can also be from low humidity. So if you're doing everything else right and you live in a dry climate, consider the humidity tray if you're having a problem with that. Okay, so now let's see. These plants are originally from Polynesia and uh, they are just gorgeous uh, growing, uh, growing outdoors there. Uh, in terms of pests, they will sometimes get mealybugs. I do have videos on controlling them. So that's about it for the pests that I've had problems with. It's not to say that you can't have other problems, but that is the one, the one pest that I've had more problems with, the, with this plant than any other pest. So keep those under control as well. They do have a leathery leaf that the pests don't tend to like as much as some other more succulent leaved plants. So that's one reason why they don't tend to attract as many pests as other plants, which makes them a really good plant to grow indoors. 
as mentioned they are from Polynesia so they do like things warm so you do ideally want to keep them from 65 to 85 degrees and somewhere in there in your indoor garden so if you and they could even go a little higher temperature wise and we're talking Fahrenheit uh, the any lower uh, then 65 they may have some problems for you they may slow down growth and, and may not look as good so if you're having some problems in that area then try to move it to a warmer area of the house that is it for this beautiful Ming Aurelia Fabian thank you for stopping by today please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see remember to like comment subscribe and share this video and please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.